Time Maw has had one of the most popular budget hand grinders within the last couple of years, the Time Maw Chestnut C2. Now the company is back with an upgraded version, intuitively named the Time Maw C3. I've had this grinder for a while now, so in this review I'll go into all the small details and tell you whether it's worth upgrading. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Esa, aka The Coffee Chronicler. I'm a certified Q-grader and journalist, and uh, I've been writing about coffee for the last 6-7 years. Today we're gonna look at this one here, the Tamo C3. If it looks familiar, it's because it's almost identical to its predecessor, the Tamo C2. When Tamo released the C2 a few years back, it was a pretty revolutionary grinder, because up until then, uh, you couldn't really get any uh, decent, affordable manual grinders. So what you had before was models from uh, Porlex and Hario, typically with uh, ceramic burrs and no real uh, stabilizers and bearings to help making the grinding smoother. So when the C2 came out and it was uh, priced at a similar level, it was a pretty cool product because it suddenly allowed a lot of people who previously couldn't afford a good hand grinder to uh, get one and be able to uh, make more delicious extractions. Okay, let's first talk about the design. Not much has really changed here. Uh, this pretty much looks like uh, the Time More C2, except I feel like maybe the color is just a little bit darker. It's more like a black, whereas the other one could be called a uh, very dark gray, but we're probably splitting hairs here. The Time More C3 has an anatomically shaped handle that spins smoothly due to being mounted on ball bearings. On the inside, there's a set of 38mm steel burrs. We've seen this design on many many hand grinders over the years, and it works perfectly fine, so there's no real reason to change it. The body's material is aluminum, while the hand crank and burrs are stainless steel. Weighing in just around a pound, 423 grams to be precise, this grinder is relatively lightweight compared to many competitors. This is partly achieved by using plastic stabilizers on the inside and cutting down on unnecessary fat. Being lightweight is a plus, but some people will probably see plastic internals and thinner aluminum as drawbacks. I'm not sure if the plastic is something you really need to worry about, besides for aesthetic reasons. The stabilizers seem well made and they're not exposed to excessive force during regular operation. The idea behind the surface is that it gives some additional grip. At the same time, the diameter and ergonomics of the C3 are pretty comfortable, so it's a pretty small smooth experience to operate the grinder. So talking about the outside, there's not really a whole lot to say in this review. It's pretty much the same as the C2, but uh, as the old saying goes, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. There is one little thing that is worth talking about, and that is that the uh, adjustment dial indicator in here is now steel, whereas it was made of plastic before, and some people experienced that uh, it would crack after extended use. The really big difference in the C3 lies in the new burr set that Time More has produced. This burr uses what Time More calls spike to cut technology, also shortened to S2C. The inner cone burr does look rather unusual, with vertical lines going up across the upper part of the burr. This design is inspired by the burr set used in uh, Time More's high-end grinder, the Time More Chestnut X. However, even though there's some similarities, these burrs are definitely not the same. They are slightly smaller at 38mm versus 42mm, uh, and uh, the geometry is also quite different. When Time More initially launched the spike to cut burrs, there was a little bit of hype surrounding them, but it seemed like it died down pretty quickly. So while the spike to cut burrs look interesting, it's not really clear that the technology makes much of a difference in real life. Back when I reviewed Time More C2 a couple of years ago, I was rather impressed by the speed of the burrs. Actually, it was one of the fastest hand grinders I had tried. Unfortunately, the new burrs are a step back in this regard. They are noticeably slower. So the new burrs are a bit slower, but that shouldn't matter much if they are also better, right? I don't have the Time Mouse C2 anymore, 
but instead I've compared the C3 to this one here, the Slim Plus, which I also have reviewed previously. So the Slim Plus also has some interesting burrs, uh, the so-called ENB burrs. The ENB burrs are supposed to be a bit more consistent than the original C2 burrs, while also being able to grind for espresso. So for this review, I put them up against the C3. In my testing, it felt like the C3 offered a little bit more clarity in terms of flavor, but uh, I wouldn't really say it's outright in a different league. Uh, I would probably put them in the same division, which is not quite the Premier League of uh, hand grinders. I will say that the C3 definitely has a bit of a signature flavor. It provides a sweet cup uh, with a good balance, but it also has a slightly short aftertaste and a somewhat muted acidity. To get some additional data, I also did a sifting test where I compared the two grinders. And while the C3 is a little bit more uniform, again, it's not really something you can say would make a massive difference. So I would say they perform fairly average for hand grinders of this type, which is definitely okay, but not anything groundbreaking or even somewhat close to flatbird grinders. One of the main problems with the Time More C2 was that uh, it didn't perform very well for espresso. So technically you could grind fine enough, but uh, when you had it at that ultra fine setting, it would just take forever to grind for a single shot. So to grind an 18 gram dose, you would probably have to keep going for five minutes or something like that, which isn't really acceptable for most people. So one of the big promises of the C3 is that uh, Time More claims that it can actually grind for espresso. I find that to be true. In my testing, it can grind fine enough, and it's also significantly faster than the C2. However, the challenges come when you're trying to really dial in the shot, because the adjustment wheel doesn't offer a lot of granularity. So I tried this one here on uh, seven clicks first, and the shot just completely choked. Then I tried it on eight clicks, and I had a pretty good shot, slightly fast, but uh, I would probably be able to dial it in better. And then I tried to go coarser up to nine clicks again, and uh, that shot was just way too fast. So uh, realistically, you will probably only have one setting to really dial in your shot with the Time More C3. That being said, if you're willing to experiment a bit with the dose, tamping pressure, and so on, I'm pretty sure you will get a decent result out of it. Of course, all this is not ideal, but if you want to make espresso on a budget, there will be some compromises. And yeah, workflow and adjustment is probably one of them. I should also mention that the Tamo Slim Plus had a little bit of the same problem, but uh, relatively quickly, people started producing uh, third-party accessories that you could add on to the dial indicator, and uh, that would give you some more granularity, uh, effectively working a little bit like the red clicks for the Commandante. So my guess is something similar will probably come out to the Time or C3 reasonably soon. Okay, it's time for the verdict. I will say in many ways, the Time or C3 is the logical upgrade to the C2. It uh, improves on uh, some of these slightly annoying things with the C2. It's nice with the new metal indicator and the new burr set is uh, of course a welcome addition. It's nice to get a little bit better uh, performance for espresso. On the other hand, I will also say, as far as I can tell now, the grinder is also a little bit more expensive and uh, it's uh, significantly slower. So two of the things that were really cool about the C2 was that it was a super fast grinder and it was uh, very affordable. I will say if the C3 is priced at exactly the same level as the C2, then it does make sense as an alternative. But if it's significantly more expensive, I'm not really sure I would go for this one here over the previous version. I should say currently I've seen some pretty good deals on AliExpress where they are almost the same price. So I'll put some links to that down below. But it seems if you're buying from an American vendor, then it's going to cost you a little bit more than the C2. At this price range, it's also worth considering uh, Time More's own Slim Plus. Arguably, it's a nicer construction, it feels a little bit more premium in the hand, and it still has that uh, good speed and uh, pretty good performance for espresso. So yeah, that's also worth to take into consideration. You also have the Q2 from Easy Peso, which is also in the same price range. It's a little bit smaller and it feels a bit more premium as well. If you're curious about these two grinders, then uh, I'll put some uh, reviews here. And then you can just click and then I'll see you over in another video.